Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to talk about Express.js routes and how you should organize them and how you can nest routers together so that your code is easy to maintain and easy to extend. So I'm just going to uh, create a new package.json file with npm init dash yes. And then I'm going to install two things. So for one, uh, we obviously need express. And we also want to have save dev node mon. Uh, so node mon allows me to do like a hot reload simply because I don't want to um, start and stop the server all the time. Okay, and here we are. And I forgot one more thing. Let's also create an index.js file in here. Okay, there it is. Good. So as you can see, yeah, we have like express and we have nodemon and another script we need is let's call it dev and then we say nodemon nodemon index.js. Okay. That's it. Now we have hot reload. That's pretty cool. Let's open up a terminal over here. And what I actually wanted to show you today is how to like use express routes and how to organize them properly because I just saw that people are putting everything inside of one file. And that's obviously like not the best choice. Okay, but let's just create like the skeleton of the app. So I'm just going to say, uh, I'm going to import like express and I'm going to create an application and then I'm going to say app.listen and I will just say 8080. And in the callback, I'm just going to make a console log and I'll say server listening on port 8080. Okay, because on a server you can have different applications, so you need, or you can, in order to run different applications, you can run them on different ports. Okay, so that's our server. And if we now um, run this, so we can say npm run dev, then actually we should get like some output and everything should be working yeah so you see service running on port 8080 but now it's not doing anything and what you oftentimes see is that people are putting in the routes directly in here so they do something like app.get and i'm just going to come up with some silly example here um, something like that right so they say okay i want to make or i want to specify that there's a get request. So I want to read something from the server, not change it, but just read it. And then we just have slash animals and then let's, we're just going to return something in here, right? Uh, I don't know, John and know, Tom. Okay, and it goes on like this, right? Then people might realize, oh, actually I also want to create like an animal, right? So they add another route and then they say, Okay, now I want to uh, create like an animal. And then it, it continues and continues. And what they end up doing is they are putting like all the routes inside of the index.js file and um, they are not using a nested router structure. And that is what I wanted to show you today. So instead of putting or instead of saying app.get, you want to have one root router and inside of this or, and this root router is going to handle like all the logic. So all paths uh, that you want to expose should be specified inside of this root router. And like so you have a nice separation of concerns so that your application, your index.js file, it just doesn't care like what routes it has. It just plugs in like one router and that's it. Let me just show you like how this works. Uh, let me quickly stop the server and I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call it routes and then I'm going to say routes and then index.js. Okay, so instead of specifying the routes with app.get, what you can do is, or what you should do is, you create a new directory routes and then you have an index.js file. And now, because it's kind of like standard, everyone knows, ah, okay, the routes are specified in here. Okay, and what we need to do here is, as before, we need to uh, import our express. And now uh, we can do something like router equals express.router. And the idea here is that instead of 
saying app.get, we just use our router over here. So we can say router.get and then animals. Ah, now I have to type it again. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say uh, oh, John and Tom. Okay, and I also need to export this. Okay, so what we basically did is instead of having the logic in here, we just create a directory and inside of this directory, all our routes will go into. And by the way, this also works for a rather, for a rather large amount of routes. So if you have, say, more than 100, this still works. But obviously, you have then more than one file. But I just want to show you like how to plug uh, this router inside of your application. Right, because what you now have is you have a router and you have to find something, but like how do you now plug this router into your server like this guy? And it's pretty simple. So you just have to do uh, app dot use slash router, and I forgot to import it. So I'm just going to say router equals require routes, and this is going to pull in the export of the index.js file. So we could have also written index, but most of the time people just write routes. Okay, and what this basically does is it says, hey, um, give me the export of this file, meaning like this router, and plug this thing, plug this router at the route slash. And that's why you could basically call this the root router because it handles all requests. Um, we can actually try this out. So let's just say npm run dev. Remember, we got our nodemon thing going on. And at the moment, um, we can just say, okay, slash animals. So it was a get request. Let me just open uh, some postman over here. By the way, you can also use your browser for this because it's a get request. Okay, and there you see it. Like we just made a get request and we just got the John and the Tom back. So basically our application, like the request was coming in and then we plugged in like our root router and our root router knew, ah, okay, I have to run through all the routes that were registered. And then it saw, ah, okay, we got like slash animal. So I'm just going to run that. Okay, so this setup is like much better than um, using or directly specifying it in here. So that's the first thing. If you do it like this, it's much better. Uh, one more thing I'd like to mention is that before you do that, you want to use some JSON parsing middleware. So why is that? Because if like the request that we are sending, in case we send like some parameters, these parameters are sent as strings. So let's just imagine, right? Actually, I can show you, right? Let's just imagine I want to be able to uh, create like an animal. So I'm just going to say post, because post is for creating. Um, then the important thing is that I probably have some parameters in here. So I don't know, maybe I got like some, you know, maybe I have an, like a name and then I call it um, Jan, okay? <laughs> uh, so I j if you send this in the payload, this is like sent as a string in the original HTTP request. And that's why you actually need to convert this string back to a JavaScript object. And this is why you need this express JSON middleware. Yeah, so as you can see, our index file looks pretty clean. So that's quite okay. Now there's one more thing I want to show you. Uh, let's just imagine I have another route. Okay, let's delete this. Uh, let's say I have something like router.get and I say mm, animals, whoops, where is it? Animals and then lions as a slash. And this one is kind of interesting because as you can see, whoops, as you can see, um, the first path is a prefix of the second one. Okay, so basically, this thing slash animals is also contained in here. And as soon as you end up writing something like this, it actually makes sense to create more than one, one 
sub router right at the moment we only have one but just imagine you have more routes like this uh, maybe you still have like post all right something like that okay uh, something like that wouldn't be ideal because this is plural here but anyway you know as you can see this is kind of like repetitive so you have like this slash animals uh, what happens if you rename it at some point yeah it's not so nice so as soon as you have like routes that are real prefixes of each other it actually makes sense to put all of them into a separate router and this is what we're going to do right now so let me go to this thing and I want to change into the routes directory and I'm going to create an animals uh, directory and I'm also going to create an index no an animals index.js oops index.js <laughs> sometimes I can't type okay so what you can see in here is that why do we now have this thing is such a weird oh I accidentally make, made it a directory oops uh, uh, animals sorry let me do this again okay and then I have to touch it of course cool now we have it okay so you can see okay there's it's like a real prefix and that's why it makes sense to create a separate router so same thing I'm going to take this I'm going to copy it and now I'm going to put this inside of my new index.js file and I'm going to export the router now let's remove let's cut this and and this is how you actually compose multiple routers like you can do that to an arbitrary nesting level by the way uh, you can just say okay animal animals router equals require animals and then you can say router.use animals and then animals router and the nice thing about this structure is actually that your folder structure corresponds to the path so if someone is wondering okay what is this thing doing and the person is open up the opening up the routes file he kind of sees ah okay this corresponds to the file structure so if i want to know animals i just have to say okay routes slash animals is probably in here so this is kind of good and the key thing here to understand is that now uh, that these paths are always relative to the current router okay so we say this router here this index.js router under the route slash animals i want this router to handle all the requests and that's why it's not slash animals again but only slash because otherwise the, the path would be otherwise the path would be slash animals slash animals and that's not what we want okay so right now at the moment this is exactly the same as before the only difference is we moved it to a different file but what's interesting right now is that we can create another file in here and we can say lions.js and we can create another router so I'm going to this and I'm going to say uh, uh, Susan okay say Susan is the only line we have Oops, like this and we also always need to make sure that we export this router now you might say but why the hell are we like uh, doing it like that right it's kind of we have these routers all over the place what's the what's the point of that and the idea here is, is that you actually have a, a nesting and this nesting allows you to kind of separate your routes because what you can do in here is you can do something like router use um, slash lions and then you can say uh, lion router and all you got to do is you can import this lions router yeah so as you can see now um, we have yeah I don't know whether maybe you want to do it like this or like that it doesn't matter 
So now you can see is we don't have some hard coded path with some real prefix. So we no longer have animal slash animals and we no longer have slash animals slash lions, but we actually put everything inside of its own router. And this is actually pretty good because it makes things clean. Um, so now you can see if we, if we re recall everything, we have one root router, this is slash, okay? So this says all requests that go to slash, so all requests that go to slash, which is all requests, are going to be handled by this router. And this router says, okay, all requests that go to slash animals are going to be handled by this router, which is this guy. And then this router, and then in here we say, okay, if it's like a get request with slash animals, then we are going to do something in here. And if it's slash lions, well, we got a separate router for that. And then inside of here, oh, it's actually lions router. And then inside of here, we have another get request. Okay. And this structure is actually quite good because it's very easy to scale and very easy to extend. So let's just uh, try to run this. So uh, I'm just going to say npm run dev. Yep. And let me pull up my postman. So let's make a request. As you can see, slash animals uh, still works. And also if we make a get request to slash animals slash lions, bam, we get like Susan. So this is how you typically organize uh, routes inside of a Node.js project that is probably going to get bigger, okay? So the folder structure basically matches the structure of the routes and like so it's very easy to understand. Now one other uh, note here before we close this thing off. Um, I have put in the implementation, <coughs> the implementation of the route uh, inside of, uh, well, inline. So I did not create like a controller level for or controller layer for that. This is also something you should do. So obviously you should not have some logic inside of here. You should not access the database because this is messy, right? These things, they are only here to define what routes you have. They don't care how they are actually being handled. So apart from that, you should add like an additional controller layer. And inside of this controller layer, you would actually handle the request, right? And then you would have a service layer and the controller would call like some service. And this is where you would access the database, for example. But that is like out of scope for this, uh, uh, for this tutorial over here. Yeah, so that's it pretty much. That is how you organize routes. Uh, let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you found that useful. And uh, yeah, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is pro at production coder. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.